Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to face two FPV Omni antennas to become a single high gain twin array. Just like the stack fan over here from True RC. This was made in 2012. That was some time ago, and now we have the Skyhammer made by VAS. And they are both the same, basically a twin array of two Omni antennas. So what's interesting with this twin array is that it uses a matching network with a delay of half wave. So you can see that one length here is longer than the other length. Well, in my previous video, I faced two crosshair antennas successfully to become a pepper box antenna that works really well. That's using two pieces of quarter wave transformers, which are specific length of 75 ohms cable. And likewise, the same method was used to face these two commercially made patches to become a twin array. And if we look carefully at the T-joint here, basically there's a piece of quarter wave 75 ohms inside here and here for the impedance matching. For this twin array of Omni antennas, which I'm going to make, I will not be using 75 ohms cable. Instead, I will be using micro strip. If you look at my previous video, I made a micro strip matching network, which is a corporate array that allows you to face four antennas. This is the matching network. And what I've done is I have cut a portion here, which looks like this. This is the 50 ohms feed line which is about 3mm and this is the output which is also 50 ohms and here you can see the quarter wave transformer I'll post a link to my previous video which you could download the PDF of the exact dimensions with this micro strip I'm going to face two pagoda antennas together and it will be a corporate network it will be different from this one here or the Skyhammer which has a half wave delay harness. There's no delay, they are of equal length. And with the corporate network, it's going to perform equally well, but the antenna will be both upright instead of one inverted as seen here. Well, besides having a good impedance matching to ensure that the array gives an output of 50 ohms, the other important aspect is the spacing between the two antennas. Here I'm using this simulator software to project the radiation pattern and I arrive at two specific distances which are 43mm and 30mm. Here I'm getting 5.1 dB of gain with a 43mm separation and 4.1 dB of gain with 30mm separation. Once again, this is the radiation pattern for the horizontal plane top view and you can see that 4.1 dB covers less on the horizontal axis as compared to 5.1 dB which covers further in terms of distance on the horizontal plane. And this is the other axis, the elevation plane it's a cross-sectional view for a 3mm separation also gives you a wider horizontal coverage and a higher elevation but there are now spots that's the trade-off whereas if you separate the two omnis at 30mm apart you get a more consistent flattened sphere as you can see I'm going for the 43mm just like the Skyhammer radiation pattern which is this one Basically, for the higher gain of 5.1 dB, which means I could fly out further, but I have to avoid flying out far and high because I will end up in the now spot here. In this shot, you could see a diagram that I come up with showing how the twin pagoda antennas will look like. All right, here's the completed product, and it looks pretty good. I've checked the distance, and it is really 43 mm apart. This is the front view, and this is how it looks from the back. Now the moment of truth, let's test it. Now let's scan. Now 
Not bad. Let's hope it gets lower. Okay, the BSWR is 1.02 at best. And that's at 5648 right here. But overall, even at 5.8 in the middle here, it's still below 1.2, which is really good. So I'm really happy with how this turns out. Now that's the single pagoda over there on the tripod. And basically it is transmitting 5.8 GHz. And here I have the test rig. Basically it's my antenna radiation pattern plotter from my previous video. It consists of this RC305 receiver that will receive the signal. And then it will output its RSI receive signal strength to the APM and if you notice this APM has a GPS so what it does is it will record the various RSI values with the corresponding GPS coordinates and it will lock it to the data flash lock 0.5 volts means there's no signal Once I go there to turn on that transmitting source, you should see this value change. With full signal, it should be 1.15 volts. As you can see, this test rig is mounted on the cap. I'm going to wear this whole setup on my head and start walking. Alright, now the transmitter is powered on. And I'm going to walk in an arc shape over here. So the walking path will basically plot the RSI. And then we will have the radiation pattern seen on the computer later. Right now I'm transferring the data log file from the APM to my computer. And in Mission Planner basically what I've done is I click on download data flash log via math link select the log that was created today and click on download all logs and basically it will dump the log files to here and these are all the logs what i'm really interested in is the extension log this is the one and i will send it to the desktop and i will delete the old one here And rename the new one as datafresh.log Alright, that's done And next thing is to fire up my program the Program that I have written some time ago in Python I could run the Python script in Anaconda Python or I could use the exe file which I have compiled And that will be the exe file here. I'm going to launch the exe. It's going to read this data flash and give us a visual. Oh, here is look at that. Basically, we have the walking path, which is all green. That is good signal. The dark green is a better signal than the light green. And if I walk further, I would see yellow followed by orange and red. So the Different colors represent different strengths in the signal received. And basically, for red to appear, the RSI voltage has to be below 0.54 volts. And I have tested the various RSI. For example, red would be 50% snow. And for green that we're getting, is about 20% snow for light green and 10% snow for dark green. So from this plot here, we could see that the very good signal, which is the dark green, is only up to this point. Beyond this point, if I walk further, we are seeing light green. All right, here I am at the same spot with the twin pagoda antenna. And I'm going to plot the radiation pattern. Once again, we need to look at the data flash log, which is this one. Let me copy it to the desktop. 
and rename it to data fresh. There we go. And let's run the program. Wow, look at that. Alright, okay, let me fire up the previous antenna radiation prop pattern for the single pagoda antenna. And using this ruler as a marker, we could see the start point for both the antennas. This is the array of twin pagodas and this is a single pagoda. If you look at the dark green, which is the very strong signal, the single pagoda ends about here, somewhere here, and we are seeing light green. For the double pagoda antennas, the dark green goes slightly beyond this point, which is good. And what's interesting is I'm getting back that strong signal once I walk further down. Unfortunately, I did not walk far enough for the single pagoda antenna plot. So I'm unable to conclude if I'm getting dark green here. But it goes to show that the double pagoda antenna array is pretty strong. For the first FPV flight, I'll be using a single pagoda antenna and my Bike Frost Mini quadcopter. Then I'll be flying the same flight path over there using the Twin Pagoda Antenna Array. Alright, now it's time for the second flight and I will be using the twin array of Pagoda antennas flying the same flight path Apologies for the shakes in the video, it's really windy today, as you can see from the branches moving. So in conclusion, I'm really happy with the build. This twin array is working really well. Well, the videos speak for themselves. And it's a much improved FPV experience with using this. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video 